In this video, I'm going to show you how to use presets optimally to speed up your editing workflow and generate consistently stunning results each and every time you use them. The secret is in how you tweak and fine tune the preset in order to make it fit perfectly with any other photo you might wish to apply it to. I'm going to show you how to do this easily and effectively and then I'm going to show you how to create an entirely new preset out of the new adjustments made, which you can then use to batch edit multiple photos at lightning speed. And make sure you stay till the end because I'm going to reveal a brand new AI retouching plugin which when used in combination with photo presets will help to speed up your editing process even more all the whilst maintaining professional and natural looking results that your clients will love. So here we are in Lightroom and as you can see we have this edited photo of Cynthia which comes from an indoor window lighting photo shoot. Now before we begin anything it's important to mention one crucial thing and that is that every photo is different, often in more ways than you might expect. So when one photographer creates a preset out of the edit they applied to one of their own unique photos, the chances of that preset fitting perfectly with one of your own photos with no tweaks or adjustments made is very slim. And so with that being said, let's get started with the demonstration on how best to apply and use a preset by showing you the best steps to tweak and fine tune that preset to perfectly fit any photo. And to do that, we're going to create a preset based on the settings extracted from this photo edit of Cynthia and apply it to another photo from the very same shoot. Now the reason why I want to apply this preset to another photo from the exact same shoot is to show you by just how much one photo can differ from another even when that photo was taken at the same photo shoot, in the same setting, at the same day, in the same location with the same lighting, only minutes apart and with slightly different camera settings used. The point being that any preset you apply to any photo will require some degree of fine tuning even when that photo comes from the exact same photo shoot taken minutes apart. As you can see here we have the original photo before the edit and here is the after. So very quickly let me show you what I did here to arrive to this edit result. First of all, I brought up the brightness by increasing the exposure. I adjusted some of the tones here in order to reveal more detail in the highlights whilst creating a nice soft look on the skin texture. I then adjusted the vibrancy and saturation sliders, the color temperature, as well as the colors in the HSL slash color tool in such a way so as to create a cooler slash warmer toned complementary color palette that pops and looks more 3D. So what we're going to do now is take all of these editing steps, all of these individual adjustments we made, and then package them into one single preset. And so to turn this entire edit into a preset, let's come on over to the presets menu over here, click on the plus icon, select create preset, Make sure you select the relevant boxes corresponding to the edit you applied. Let's rename this to complementary color pop and hit create. Let's now head on over to the new photo we'd like to apply this preset to. I'm going to choose this one. Come on over to the complementary color pop preset and click it. Now, as you can see, even though we applied a preset using the settings from a photo captured literally seconds after this photo was taken, we still have to apply some fine tuning in order to get the colors and tones looking good. Now do not fear as this is actually a much easier job than it looks and it can be done in seconds. All we have to do is bring down the brightness by reducing the exposure, simply drag the slider back and forth until the lighting starts to look more natural and the colors no longer look washed out. Somewhere around 1.2 looks good to me. So as you can see with that simple adjustment made we are about 80% of the way there. But in most cases it will be required to make some additional adjustments if your goal is to get the applied preset to fit your photo as perfectly as possible. And I'm going to show you some of the steps that I like to use to really dial in a preset settings to get that perfect look. First of all, once you've adjusted the exposure, the very next thing I'd recommend you do is come on down to the vibrancy and saturation sliders to fix any washed out colors or oversaturated colors whilst keeping the skin tones looking natural. Remember that the vibrancy slider simply boosts the saturation in your photo all the whilst preserving the colors in the skin tones. Using this slider can help to pump up the contrasting blue tones in the background whilst leaving the skin tones looking natural. Next, I'd recommend heading over to the white balance tool and adjust the temperature and tint to refine the colors in frame overall. 
At this point, you're about 90% of the way there. Theoretically, you could stop here, but if you're like me and you care strongly about attention to detail, then there's a couple more specific adjustments I'd suggest you make. So let's go ahead and make those additional adjustments now, this time by fine tuning the lighting by coming down to the highlights and reducing those to reveal a bit more detail in our image. Let's also increase the shadows, decrease the white slightly, and reduce the blacks to increase the photo's contrast and make it more punchy. From here, I'm going to scroll down to the HSL slash color tool to make some refinements to specific colors in frame. Starting with the hue tab, let's click and drag the yellow slider to plus nine, the aqua slider to plus 33, and the blue slider to plus 31. Let's click into the saturation tab and increase the saturation of the yellows to plus 12, reduce the greens to negative three, reduce the aquas to plus six, and reduce the blues to plus 28. At this stage, the colors and lighting are looking good to me. I'm happy with how the preset is fitting this new image, so what I'm gonna do is save these settings by creating a new preset and renaming it to Complementary Color Pop 1.2. Now what this means for you is that when you use someone else's preset, you can then fine tune the settings to fit your preferred editing style, create your own preset, and then use that preset to quickly batch edit multiple photos of your own, creating a consistent look that is unique to you in seconds. So let's go ahead and do that now by copying and pasting this edit to these seven raw images in seconds. And to do that, let's click back into our edited photo and then simply hit Control or Command C on your keyboard to copy the editing settings. Hit copy and then come on down to the seven unedited raw images. Click the first image and then holding shift, click the last image in the series to select them all. Right click any one of these images and then go into develop settings and then paste settings. And just like that, you've created a consistent look by copying over the original edit to all of these photos in a matter of seconds. And speaking of seconds, the final step of this new efficient workflow is to show you how to use an impressive AI retouching plugin. And I have to say it has been incredibly useful in helping me speed up my editing workflow in particular for my client work, such as my wedding photos, baby gender reveal photos, as well as engagement photo shoots, etc, etc, where there are a lot of photos that I need to edit and fast. For my fine art and more in-depth portrait photography work in particular, however, I do still stick to my high-end retouching techniques in Photoshop for their precision and accuracy. All right, back to the AI AI plugin, this tool is called Retouch For Me, and it plugs directly into Photoshop or Lightroom. If you want to use the Retouch For Me plugin inside Lightroom, all you need to do is right click your image, select Edit In, and then Edit In Retouch For Me app and it will open up the window in just the same way as it does inside Photoshop, as I will demonstrate right now. So to access this tool inside Photoshop, what I normally do is right click the image and then select Edit In, open as Smart Object in Photoshop. Once inside Photoshop, what I do from here is create a copy of this layer by hitting new layer and then shift plus option plus command plus E on your keyboard. With this new layer created, you can simply head on over to filter, retouch for me, retouch for me, dodge and burn. The plugin opens up in a separate window and then in seconds, the AI will analyze your image and retouch your model skin in the form of local dodge and burn which you can easily adjust the intensity of by shifting this slider to the left and right. Once done, hit apply and just like that, you have yourself an impressive and professional skin retouch applied in seconds. If you'd like to try this plugin for yourself, the kind people at retouch for me have provided me with a discount code, Justin for retouch 20, which you can use to get 20% off your order. Alternatively, you can always start a free trial using the link in the description down below. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. I'll see you next time.